and welcome back to more Hat in Time, the Seal of the Deal. Last time we finished our search of the ship, finding our timepiece that got destroyed by the Seal's incompetence. And this time we're jumping into Act 2, Ship Sheep. So, another timepiece is in the lost and found. Found lots of stuff. Hi, miss. How can I help you? Oh? There's something you want in the lost and found? Hmm. The captain lets us pick something from it if we work very, very hard. Maybe you could help. But you'd have to ask him nicely. Just follow the mess to his room. Follow the mess. Uh, that's good advice. Uh, to tell the truth, I don't know how to get to the captain's room. I am not gonna lie, I am not 100% sure how to get to the captain's room. Uh, which is, is boding very well for us, because we need to know how to get to the captain's room. In fact, we need to know this entire ship top to bottom for this next mission, because we need to help out. But, I will save the formal introduction to our mission until we, uh... Oh, I think I know where to go now. Until we, uh, get to actually unlocking the mission itself. Uh, one more floor. So, know that you can use the D-pad or you can use L, which actually slows down time a little bit. Keep that in mind, because it actually helps a lot. You know, giving you a little bit more breathing room to actually pick a hat than trying to shuffle through with the D-pad. The room with this little red circle is the captain's room. A little bit of a code to telling you where to go. What's that, pup? You want to help out? Huh. Yeah, sure. Maybe something will get done around this mess of a boat for once. It'll be a first. All right. You'll need to deliver drinks, some food, and a few other things. And do it quickly, pup. Oh, and there are some other jobs that'll need doing, so pay attention. Are you ready to start? Heck yeah. Good. You can start by getting rid of some of these boxes for me. It's starting to get messy in here. Okay, okie dokie, we have our first mission. Deliver boxes. You have a little yellow arrow telling you where to take them. Red arrows mean uncompleted tasks. Uh, yellow arrows mean partially completed tasks, meaning a red arrow is going to point you to something you need to pick up, a yellow arrow basically tells you where to put said item. Also, don't die. Uh, super, super, super important. Do not die. Uh, that sounds really trivial. Uh, it is, but also, that was really lucky. Because we- Frick. We ended up actually getting a couple things right next to each other, which is very convenient, and- Count your blessings. Alright, now we just have to wait. So, fun fact, this mission was, uh, patched. Repeatedly. The original requirement was 20 tasks. And the overall structure was way tougher. Like, all the requirements were a lot more strict. That being said, this mission is still utterly terrible. And stressful, and I am already stressing a little bit. A lot of people have compared this to the pizza missions in the classic 6th uh, gen game, Spider Man 2. That's a weird comparison, uh, but yeah, people say that's kind of analogous. Also, because the music kind of reminds people of pizza missions, <laughs> and reminds me of them too, because I grew up with that game as well. So, how do we get in there? Also, I'm gonna do this first. In addition, there is an achievement, and I'm not kidding, for doing this without the captain's anger meter going up. By the way, the thing in the bottom right is the captain's anger meter. So as that fills up, he gets angrier. I swear it's actually much harder to reduce the meter pre-patch. 
Like I swear when you do this, when you do one task, the meter drops a lot more now than it used to. And you will hear no complaints from me about that because uh, previously it didn't feel like the meter went down a whole lot. It just made the whole mission feel even more overwhelming than it actually already should feel. There's also an achievement for basically doing this without it getting to, I think, two full segments of the meter? It hasn't gone to one full segment yet, thankfully. Um, and let's keep it that way, shall we? Um, and here's where the slow descent into madness begins. Uh, we have four things to do, and a very strict time limit. If I sound like I'm stressed out, that's because I am a little stressed out. <laughs> uh, full disclosure. If I sound like I'm raising my voice, I apologize. <laughs> but it's because I'm legitimately stressing a lot over this. And again, this is like after they made it a lot easier too. Which I'm thankful that they listen to their fans, which is something more companies need to do. Listen to their fans when they say, hey, this doesn't work, and they actually patched it. It's like really cool that they actually went the extra mile to fix the thing that the fans were kind of not a fan of. Slightly redundant wording. Also, uh, you notice I'm kind of not doing a lot at once. Again, if you have three things at, in hand at once, your controls get all wobbly and awkward. So I would highly, 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 highly recommend not letting things pile up. And just sort of gradually doing a couple things at a time. Up to three is like doable. Okay. So there's a lot we can do on the deck of the ship here, or the rec area, I guess you could say, recreational center. Uh, we're gonna drop off the kid first, get the meter down a little bit. This feels so much more doable. Like, I had heard they patched it, but like, dang. It actually did make this significantly easier. Uh, and I'm all for that, because again, this mission sucked originally. Like, people were getting stuck on this mission for literal hours. Uh, I, it took me two tries. Not to sound like I'm bragging, but I feel like it's because I've literally grown up with platformers basically my whole life. Uh, if you didn't, like, know platformers well and collectathons and, like, things like that. I've, I've also tried, tried speedrunning, so I feel like if, if you try speedrunning, that would help. Um, because that kind of teaches you to route out things mentally very quickly. Uh, I can actually get the achievement. I'm actually really close to getting the achievement. Because he's not getting that mad. So, like, I could hypothetically get the achievement. By the way, you can hear the music getting a lot faster. This is a wonky jump. Wait, no. Sometimes there's stuff up there that you need to get, and you have to actually use these carts to get it. And that's really awkward and not fun <laughs> to do. Is this where- Oh, shoot. Gotta take it over here. <laughs> My bad. Made that a lot harder. I'm gonna actually take time to grab the health, because again, if you die at 17, that sucks. <laughs> uh, also, occasionally you have to take a battery to the octopus. Um, so we haven't seen that. I actually find it easy, because I find it really easy to get to the octopus. Please pass these plain, uncoded messages along for me. Ah, thank you for these ordinary letters, fellow passenger. Attention, this is your captain speaking. You can stop now, pup. Come back to control, I guess. Well, looks like you actually cleaned up more mess than you made, pup. That's more than most of the crew can manage. Help yourself to something from the lost and found. Nobody ever comes back for that stuff anyway. Uh, so note to self, if there's anything you don't like and had in time, leave feedback on the forum, because uh, the developer will actually listen to you. 
what even was that mission? That was so much more doable. Again, I never like pre patch I cut it close like twice. I did this mission twice because I wanted to practice for this very LP. Um and it was absolutely terrible. I came so close both times. And that was a cinch. That was so easy. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Feedback definitely helped. Uh, if anyone happens to see this from the development team, congratulations. And also thank you for listening to everyone who said this mission was very overwhelming and exhausting. Well, hi there. How's it going? To tell you the truth, it feels good to have someone else cooking for a change. I get to relax. Though I wonder what their kitchen is like. Maybe I could just take a peek. So even Cooking Cat is enjoying the cruise. Gang's all here except DJ Groose. I actually don't know where DJ Groose is. Also, by the way, again, uh, reiterating, because I've seen people do this, this is how I know this, don't die. That seems, that seems kind of trivial, but like, legit, do not die here. If you die here, you have to do that all over again, even if you actually made the objective. I don't know if they patched that, maybe they will, because that's kind of bad. Um, I'm debating whether to pass through the hallway of death over here or just try to go around like this goes to the reception area so we're just gonna try to time hat our way through here uh hope the best there you go now before we actually move on i love this sort of thing so we're gonna actually take a moment to look at easter eggs so this is the camera mode uh as you know uh you can actually see things in here which is nice how to how to port bookstore uh but you have like snatcher's book the ominously named book from snatcher you have the conductor's knives how to write lore in five minutes uh you have all sorts of little things the cow plush a little cottage and a music note which <laughs> you will never convince me that this isn't a banjo kazooie reference uh which, that's another game I need to get around to, I guess. Balloon. Little ribbon. That's cute. One of the little... I think that's one of the eggs from Alpine Skyline. That thing there. Also the hater shades. <laughs> um, that the little birds have. <laughs> in uh, one of the ship time rifts, I think. And also in uh, the Alpine Skyline area. The birdhouse. So yeah, just a lot of little cool easter eggs. <laughs> uh, I wasn't even sure if we'd show these with how long that can take. Uh, but we had time, so yeah. Kinda nice seeing some little easter egg type stuff. <laughs> We're not gonna stick with the camera badge, obviously. Uh, but yay, that was actually painless. <sighs> Huge sigh of relief. This is the level I have the most criticism with, and actually it feels pretty manageable now. I also just got really good luck. Because again, there's stuff like, oh, take a battery to the octopus, who's really far out of the way. Take this thing all the way over there. We didn't get anything in, like, the garden. So we didn't need to climb up in the garden at all, so that made it a lot easier. So again, it's partly luck, and I've read it's partly luck. This happened to be a very lucky run. And I'm actually glad that this ended up being the run for the LP, not gonna lie. Uh, but yeah, let's end this. So there we go, we have... We have enough now. Cake stand, and all of the cake. It's a match if I identify a relic from this strange planet. Feels like such a long time since we've seen this phrase. <laughs> or I've had to read this phrase in a video. But there you go, that is our purple time rift. 
as you probably guessed if you saw the main LP, we are saving all purple time rifts and also blue time rifts for the end of the playthrough. So, we are not actually going to be doing it now, but if you want to go ahead and try it, one, it's really hard. Again, I recommend Lilac's headpiece, because it actually makes it a lot more doable if you aren't as good at uh, real platforming, which I don't blame anybody for not being good at some of the things they throw at you. I've seen people who are good at platforming struggle a little bit with this particular time rift. So, if you want to try this yourself, it is right outside the ship in Act 1. Pretty easy to find. Uh, unfortunately, this chapter's short. Like, I don't have a problem with this, because, you know, short quality is good, but, um, it's only three acts, and, yeah, it feels a little underwhelming. I've talked to people about this who have said something that would have helped ship shape is having one more act that kind of helps you familiarize yourself with the layout of the ship. That run, that was after playing this chapter repeatedly and learning this ship, and even then there are times where I was like, I don't know how to get to this place. If you have another act, that would actually help players to kind of learn the layout a little bit. Because uh, once you have four things to do, the arrows, this is the problem I have with the chapter, the arrows get confused. Because it tries to point you to the closest thing, but if you get closer to another thing on the way, the arrow might change direction, it might point you in the wrong direction. And it just gets kind of confusing, and everything just piles up so fast that uh, I, I do legitimately think uh, this would be better if there was sort of like another act to ease players into the layout of the overall ship. But that all being said, again, they patched it to make it easier, and I'm all for that with how much I struggled originally and how everyone I know struggled with this chapter. So, uh, kudos. Props for listening to all the people- <laughs> all the angry fans who were, uh, some of them probably less than polite. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it like that. But in any case, thank you for watching, and I hope you join me next time for more A Hat in Time. See you the deal.